This video is going to show how to evolve a simulation with a keystroke or a button press. So to have a simulation evolve, you view the locations both as locations like Alpha Bravo, etc., and conditions like Alpha Incipient, Alpha Freeburn, Extension, etc. In other words, you set up different slides and then link the arrows in the navigation to the condition you want to trigger. For example, in this sim, we set the center up button to trigger an extension of the fire, like this. In reality, there are two slides, and we connect those slides with one of those arrows. On the Windows and Mac, you can use a keystroke to trigger the navigation, like this. In this case, the up and then the down arrow. But if you hide the navigation cluster, like this, Sims you Share sets up different regions of the screen so you can tap on, called Tap Regions, to trigger the location or condition change This is designed so you can set it up so your students don't see which condition you're triggering. So let's create a simple sim with an evolving condition. Let's go to New, say Gas, select Photo from Disk, select our picture, let's put some light smoke in, laminar, We'll color that, make it opaque, a little bit more transparent. There we go. So let's say that's our first condition. And when we trigger a button, we're going to then make it show heavier smoke and fire out the window. What I do is I go to the location menu, create a new location. I'm going to call this one smoke and fire. I'm not going to change the background here because I'm going to use the same assets and the background as the initial location. When I don't set a background, it automatically uses the background from whatever I'm copying. So I create it here. But now if you look in our location menu, we have both an initial location and a smoke and fire location. And we're right here at the smoke and fire location. Maybe a better name would be rather than smoke and fire, something like a free burn. Click yes. Now what I can do is I can remove my light smoke and replace it with, let's say, a heavier smoke condition. And I'll just darken this down a bit. And I will add some fire. And now I have my free burn condition and I have my initial location, my essentially my initial location. So what I'm going to do now is say set the navigation. I'm setting it from initial location and I typically use this inside button to go up a condition, but you can use any arrow. Click on it and I say when you click on this, go to the free burn. Because the reciprocal navigation is set, it automatically will say from the free burn, go use the down arrow, will take you back to initial location. Let me rename this initial location to say this may be like a initial, or let's say incipient. And I'm going to go here to say instead of just free burn, I'm going to call this one rename this location. I'll call it A Free Burn. And since I've already set my navigation, I just do, let me go back down to my incipient. I hit play. And now when I press this key, it goes to the Free Burn. And I can use the keyboard, which is the down arrow, to go back there. Or if I hide the navigation cluster, I can use the tap region, which is up here, to change the condition. This can obviously be done with multiple locations, and as you increase your or decrease your fire, you can also connect that increased condition to a circuit 
around the building and through the building. So you can evolve the condition and show different conditions in the various uh, proper locations.